Hello YouTuber, today I'm going to show you how to use a countertop toast oven as your PCB reflow oven. In this video, I'm going to use the oven as is, which means no repeater part, no custom modification of the oven. All you need to have is some sort of temperature sensory with a uh, circuitry that is capable of controlling the oven to produce the desired temperature profile according to the uh, reflow Backs. I used to work on a project that required me to build an oven a while ago. I had to do a whole bunch of medication inside the oven to turn that into a reflow oven. It worked fine. Over years, I just figured it's not a sustainable uh, solution because every time you want to reproduce one or the oven itself broke down, you have to do the whole thing again, which costs a bit of time. So this method will just you know use the oven as is but you control the stuff from outside. Of course, requirements for the oven are three important factors. First of all, it cannot be the oven with those fancy touch panel and function kind of stuff. You need an oven with only manual control. You can preset the oven in a configuration and the oven will work as soon as you power it on. This makes the oven basically surrender its control to you that you can hook it up to a circuitry. Uh, the second is it must be a convection oven because the fan will circular air inside make sure everywhere is evenly heated which is very important the last point is that you need to choose an oven that has the smallest capacitance but the strongest heating elements so that it will heat up as quickly as it can so i got this oven from amazon for only 50 bucks amazing um it's very beautiful i'm very happy to receive it it has all the features I just mentioned. Manual control, small decent size with four heating elements, and a convection fan, which will help circulate air. Very beautiful oven, as you can see here. I feel like it's a waste to be used on PCBs. But think about this, the boards that you work on is gonna be much more expensive than the food. So it's not a waste, it's dollars well spent. And let's open it. Door. See, okay, here are two heating elements on the bottom and two more on the top. The convection fan is on the side. Overall, it looks quite bigger than I would expect it, but uh, yeah, this is the smallest one I can buy that comes with four heating elements. Should be okay. The first is temperature control. So I set it to the toast setting, which means it bypasses all the internal. Uh, temperature control. The next one is the uh, mode. So I'm putting on the convection and bake mode uh, which means when it works all the elements will be heated and the fan will turn on. I will also bypass the timer so it stays on. So with all the pre-configured settings the oven will work as you want as soon as the power is on. Rather than you know with those fancy control panels usually controlled by MCU every time you turn it on it will need to initialize, power on, reset kind of stuff. So this will allow you to control the whole oven through the external power. As a quick demo, I'm going to show you how I manually control it through the external power. So like this is a little switch I'm plugging to the power strip. Uh, the oven is pre-configured to the status I just described. Basically, I just turn on, off, on, off to simulate some sort of um, PWM control. Because you know, when you do temperature control, most likely you will do uh, pulse width modulation controlling. So this is like simulating it. When it's need to heat up quick, it's gonna be turned on all the time. When it reaches the target temperature, uh, duty cycle will turn down, go back to 50% like this, or even lower. So every time I turn on, you can see red LED turns on which means it's heating up. That's exactly what I wanted. This is not possible with a oven that's controlled by all those touch button and fancy panels. And let's take a look at inside. And if you can see it, oh, it's pretty hot. We're gonna turn off, the fan stops, back on, fan starts again. So now I just need to hook up everything with my little circuit boards to do a automatic closed loop control. So the oven's power will be eventually controlled through this uh, solid state relayer. 
um, you can see it takes in AC power controlled by a low voltage signal. For the temper side, I'm going to use this uh, thermocoupler for the probe and use this chip. The MX6016.5 takes in this probe and output signal as digital. It detects temperature from 0 degree all the way to 700 degrees Celsius. So components have been put together to make this uh, oven controller with closed loop PID modulation. This is power in. It takes a regular power cord from the house outlet. Control through this uh, relay on off. You can see this one is only cutting on off the uh, hot wire of the power. And eventually come out this side, which is just a regular outlet. So my oven will be plugged into this port directly and the whole thing will be direct control through this uh, solid state relay, which is controlled by my uh, microcontroller right here. And my microcontroller also takes in the output from the temperature converter, which is connected to the uh, uh, thermal probe. So the microcontroller takes in the temperature read, uh, running PID algorithm, they eventually control the oven through the uh, PWM. And there's also a little uh, seven segment display here. Can just show the real time temperature for an operator like me. All right, so let's hook it up to the real oven, see how it works. Okay, everything is plugged in. The main power is coming from the power strip over there. Controlled by this microcontroller and the oven is plugged in the other side of it. Um, as you can see, I have the uh, thermal coupler plugged in as well. It reads 35 degrees Celsius. Pretty hot, to be honest, in the summer right now. But computer is not necessary. I just need some 5 volts DC for this chip to work. But at the same time, I can actually get a log of my uh, a temperature profile. So it is going to be useful for me to verify that all my algorithm works. So I, I can program everything to be um, operatable just through this uh, push button. So there's an easy demo. So every time I press this button, you can see, turns on a little bit. It's blinking because I'm turning on uh, the duty cycle, about 10%. And the base frequency is just 10 hertz because I don't think a way too high uh, frequency will work for AC control. So. 10 hertz, 10% uh, duty cycle every step. Keep pressing again, 20%, keep going on. And the status bar also increase. All the way up, it's actually 100% on, full on mode. This is just a manual control of the oven in case I wanna heat up a little bit or not. And later I will actually turn it on in the closed loop control you will see then. All right, now let me put my uh, probe into the oven to start this process. As you can see, I used the oven for some video just now, so the temperature jumped to 50 degrees. All right, I'm gonna press button, and the whole auto closed loop control will start to follow the profile. As you probably can tell from video, the temperature didn't quite catch up. It did not reach the target value that I programmed. I figured, there might be a strong leak through the glass door as it felt pretty strong radiation uh, right in front of the oven. So I decided to seal it up, see if that helps uh, retain the heat. All right, so I have uh, sealed up with the uh, foil tape. So the idea is to, you know, reflect the radiation back into the oven. I left the window here just for me to observe if necessary. Um, of course, now it looks not as nice as it was before, but uh, it should work better now. Since my microcontroller could provide a temperature lock, I'm happy to plot the curves here for a quick comparison. As you can see here, the yellow line is my target, the green line is my first dry run. Obviously, the temperature always lags behind due to the heat loss through the front glass door. After taped up with foil tapes, the performance has been improved a lot. You can see here on the blue line. So a few more tweaks on the PDI parameters further improved its performance. Then, I couldn't wait to put the oven to work. 
So I picked one of my projects that has a QFN package chip and a surface mount LEDs. The soldering looked really nice as you can see from the video. Of course, most importantly, the components all worked very well. I even successfully picked a circuit board with a BJ package chip. And amazingly, it finished perfectly well. Of course, there are some tips about solder paste deployment, which I will probably do a separate video later. But the oven did a great job. As you can see here, it also produced cosmetically different results. Please note, the tiny capacitors are just 0 to 0 1. Tiny, tiny, small package. So for packages like BJ or 0 to 0 1, it is definitely hard or impossible to hand solder with the iron. So I'm happy to conclude this video that this method provides you a cheap and possible solution to create your own PCB reflow oven for probably under 100 bucks. And it results in a very clean configuration. Only two components, a controller and an oven. You can swap either of them when necessary. It makes it possible to easily reproduce, maintain, or store. Thanks for watching my video. Hopefully this one can give you some tips of creating your own reflow oven.